Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the on track series video for the tier 10 American heavy tank, the T57 heavy. Yes, it's a topical on track because it's literally just gone on track. It's just had two of its tanks in the line buffed. I didn't ever think it was going to get buffed in terms of some of the tanks in the line. So I was actually preparing to make an on track video for it already. And yeah, then they went and buffed it. So it was like, oh, right, okay, well, I just have to get the two replays for these two tanks then since I've got everything else ready. Well, three tanks ready because I have to get the M7 as well. But yeah, so we've got the on-track search for the T57 Heavy. They recently buffed the T69, T54E1 yesterday from when this video comes out. And yeah, they've changed some things on those tanks. We'll get to that when we get there. If you've not seen the on-track series video, it's basically where we play through the tier 5 to 10 and show you what they're all about. Crew setups, equipment setups, all that sort of thing. So this first replay is the little tier 5, the M7. Now the audio is a little bit out of sync on this one, so yeah, don't adjust your sets, it's just a bit annoying. And yeah, the M7 is it's not a bad little light tank. It's almost like a fast version of something like the T34, the Russian medium tank, because it is pretty quick, it gets a pretty decent little top speed of 60. It's got decent view range, decent camo for tier 5, and it's got a really fast firing little gun. It's only got 105 pen on its standard rounds, which is a little bit of a letdown, but it's got like 170 pen on its premium rounds, which is enough to pen most things you're going to face at tier 5, which is really nice. And I say this rate of fire is really quick, you're seeing 2.5 seconds as well. So in terms of a crew on this tank, I run Born Leader. Rapid reload, sixth sense, situational awareness, camouflage expertise, muffled shot, steady aim, snapshot, and run and gun. The gun perks to make this gun a lot nicer because it is fairly derpy. Camouflage expertise and muffled shot just to make the most of your camo and when you fire and stuff like that. And yeah, all the rest just because it's what you'd normally take. In terms of equipment, I run vert stabs, optics, and the camo net. Now I run optics to make my view range again as good as it possibly can be. Camo net to make my concealment better because I am a light tank and concealment is really important, especially at tier 5 where there's low view ranges. And vert stabs to again make this gun 20% more accurate because it is a little bit derpy and just making it that little bit more accurate and be able to hit these shots is definitely a plus point for it. And in terms of the crew, by the way, I do run that crew all the way through the light tanks of this line because it is. Three light tanks to start the line, then one medium tank, then two heavies. So, yeah, the little M7, that's how I set it up. And, like I say, it is a pretty fun little light tank. So you get to zoom about and put this great firing gun into action. Now, obviously, I don't run a, I could run a rammer on the M7, but I don't because, it's to me, it already fires fast enough for the 70 damage that if I'm firing any quicker, it doesn't give you a chance to get the gun fully aimed in and you know, keep the shots flying into pen them. You miss a lot more shots because you're firing faster, you're not quite as aimed, and you feel like you've got to keep, you know, running and gunning with it. So that's why I don't run a ram, really. Because it, or, let's say two and a half seconds is fast enough. If I can make everything else better, it, you know, it, it's no good firing at two seconds for every shot if I don't hit the shots right. So right now we've angered a ram panzer. We tried to shoot the Rampanzer once, and this man is now charging. You can see it in his eyes. He is the Rampanzer extraordinaire. He is coming. And it's like, okay, you know what? Let's just keep moving. Hopefully this guy won't hit us. And we don't allow Rampanzer bullying around here, so we're just going to go after him. And we start smashing the shots in while we're on the move. He is missing all of his shots. And it's like, well, goodbye, Mr. Rampanzer. And the Rampanzer gets shut down. There we go. It's always great to shut the Rampanzers down at Tier 5. But now the Churchill 1's getting involved. And it's like, oh no, Mr. Churchill 1, please don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> no shot from the Churchill 1 and he shuts us down. But the team manages to carry it through to the victory. We finish with 5 kills, 1,700 damage, 570 assistance, ace tanker, high caliber, 1,493 base XP. A really nice game for the little Tier 5 American light tank, the M7. It's a tank that you don't see very often, and it's it can be a little fun little light tank at Tier 5, just to run around and have that fast rate of fire. And that's a pretty decent camo to boot as well. And it's just a nice little start to the line. It's weird that it's a heavy tank line, or at the top of it anyway, and it starts with three light tanks, then one medium, and then now two heavies. 
But it is what it is. We're on to the second replay, and this one is in the tier 6 light tank, the T21. Now, you may be looking at the T21 and you're thinking, this looks like a T20, the tier 7 medium tank that runs into the M48A5 line. It's like, yeah, it's because it pretty much is. It's the T20, but it goes faster, has around the same camo, but has the 76mm gun from the Sherman. Pretty much is what this tank is. It's a pretty decent little light tank, but you're best not to really play it like a light tank. You're better to be more like the Sherman S medium that is fast, right? Because it does only have the 57 km an hour top speed, so it's not the fastest compared to a lot of the light tanks. The traverse speed is incredible, as you can see, but you generally will get trashed compared to a lot of the other light tanks you're facing. And your best, like I say, just to play it a bit more like the Shermans or like the earlier Shermans where, you know, you play to try not to get hit and just use the good rate of fire that this 76mm gun has. I mean, it has 130 pen on its standard rounds with 177 on its premium, which, when you're getting against tier 8s, is not, is going to struggle a little bit, but at least you can sort of pen them with it. And yeah, so your rate of fire for it is a little bit slower with the setup I've got. Because again, I don't run a rammer because I make the most of everything else. Because the gun is not the most accurate. I run vert stabs to get it 20% more accurate. Optics again, because I'm a light tank. So I do want to make my view range better always. And the camo net to make the most of the really good camo that this tank does have. And yeah. I run the same crew as I do on the M7 as well. And like I say, yeah, I, you could run a rammer because, I mean, we've got a 3.7 second reload, which, again, could be far quicker, realistically. But I decided, you know what, I don't want to, again, make my DPM better if I'm just going to miss all the shots because the gun handling's woeful. And I do want to make my DPM better. Not DPM, camo better, sorry. So that's why I run those things like I do. And the little T21... I like the little T21. It can be a lot of fun. It does get outclassed a lot by a lot of other tier 6 lights. Plus, if you just play it like more like the T20, but you've not got the alpha damage of the T20, you've just got the sort of lower alpha, you'll be alright. You just flank and get shots in where you can. And as you can see, in this game so far, we have used our mobility to our advantage. We've got into a good position to get some shots into the back ends of these guys, and we managed to shut down the little le leopard, I think it was, and we got a few shots into the MX-13-75. Just looked for a shot at the Panzer 3 4 there, but unfortunately it misses, but now we're starting to get looked at. It's like, okay, no, we're not going to do that. I was thinking of going for the artillery, but my TD is charging down the J-line, so it's like, okay, you know what, sir, you can do that. You go after the artillery. I'm going to start trying to harass these guys that are pushing the 1-2 line because, well, it would feed me more damage and there's no point two of us going for artillery, but the artillery did actually end up shutting down our TD. But we've got some nice shots at the VK 3001P. Then we've got the Hellcat going in. Like I so say, you see him with the camo and that, we're just managing to farm some shots in. You do have to be wary of this tank because the shell velocity on it isn't quite the best with this 76mm. It is only 792 meters a second on these AP rounds which is pretty poor so you've really got to lead your shots really well obviously you'll notice a big difference between firing the standard AP and the APCR when you switch to it so now we're going in on this Panzer 3-4 it's like okay I've, I've got to go on, on this guy I've got to get rid of him because well he is healthy and we just need to sort of go in because look, look at the enemy team there's only three tanks left if I was just to sit there and let this guy just sit there, we wouldn't be able to chase after these rampanzers and get any more damage. So we get managed to shut down that 3-4. Well, we didn't kill it, the artillery did. But we've got most of his health, which is nice. We switched to APCR because, well, we're facing rampanzers and you just need the premium rounds to go through the rampanzers reliably. You don't want to have to keep bouncing on those things. If you let them get away with murder, the rampanzers will just destroy everything. At this tier, so I mean, even in the tier six game, tier seven game, sometimes you, so you've just got to make 
the most of every shot you're going to shoot at them. And as you can see, the APCR velocity is definitely something that I really wanted as well for this distance. And we managed to shut down that Rampanzer. The second one's coming along and it's like, well, hello, Mr. Rampanzer. Let me just shut down your rammingness. And unfortunately, we missed the first shot. But, <laughs> but that shot goes in because, of course, RNG. Thank you very much. And we finish off that Rampanzer. We finish the game with the epic victory. 2.6k damage. 1,893 base XP. 3k combined. Ace tanker, the high caliber. And yeah, 893 base XP, top of the team. Really nice game for the T21. It's a tank that you don't see all that often. It is just the T20, but a tier lower. And has better mobility and a smaller gun and light tank camo. And it, it, it's a pretty decent little light tank to play. It's pretty nice. And it's one that I definitely enjoyed playing through to the 3 mark on it. And we're on to the tier 7 now. And the tier 7 is the T-71DA. It's actually a tank that I really have always loved. And that's from its original form as the T-71 when it was, you know, it could see tier 9s and 10s. Like the Lycan. It was, that's what it used to be like. That's why the Lycan now has that wonky matchmaking where it can never see tier 5s. Because it's still got the same stats as the old T-71, which is what the Lycan was. And... I've always loved the Lycan and this tank. It was it was just always fun. And obviously this tank now only has 145 pen on its APCR with a 210 heat. But it's still got a lot of other little good things going for it. And I just have always really enjoyed the six shot autoloader. I've always enjoyed the mobility. It's just a lot of fun to play. I mean, it's the reason it's the tank with my highest base XP from when I three marked it. Which was like, what, 3.1k base or something like that? I don't know. It was in the third mark video for the tank that I did a little while ago where I did like 11k combined in it or something like that and yeah I just it's just so much fun so in terms of equipment on this tank I actually run a pretty standard light tank autoloader setup and that is optics vert, vert stabs and camo net because camo net again because you are a light tank so you want to make your deep not your DPM, doy. You want to make your camo better. You want to make it so that it's harder for you to get spotted. Vert stab is 20% more accurate on the gun because that's just what you need to be doing. And optics to make sure that my view range is as high as possible. And we're on highway. And so far, we've missed a lot of shots. <laughs> this has been so much run and gun. I mean, naturally, this tank is not the most accurate. So when you're firing on the move, it really does struggle. you best to get yourselves into flanking positions and start using the autoloader to just put fresh damage in. Now, we have been very aggressive to get under this bridge on highway, but this is just what you want to be doing in a light tank because you can get good spotting out if you spot the TDs and stuff like that and the campers. How does that bounce? Okay, yeah, so you can spot all their campers along the 7-8 line and anyone that crosses the A line can get spotted and get shot up by your team, which is what's happened because a lot of their team did cross. And we've ended up with 3.3k spotting and a thousand damage so far. We end up ricocheting off, what are, what are some of these shots? We end up ricocheting off the back end of the T3485, but this is where the T71DA is really nice. When we get that tank that we can just dump the clip in, we managed to finish that little tier six medium tank off. And it does reload very, very fast. So, there's that SU-85 there. I'm not too concerned about him because he's got a medium tank closing in. What I want to do is get up to this ridge up here and see if I can spot their artillery. See if I can possibly get a shot into the back end of the SU-85 if he pokes up, which he does a little bit. He just teases us. And there we go. We find the Hummel. It's like, hello, Mr. Hummel. Just let me get rid of you. He fires a shot, so we know he's not going to shoot us if we get spotted. We shut down the Hummel. The SU-85 ends up coming back up. And I'm just trying to blind fire it. And we end up missing it with two. And then ricocheting off his side. What is going off? RNG, stop it. <laughs> wow, I mean, some of these shots have been like... I mean, the, the on-the-move brawls were terrible, and that's just the way it goes, because it sometimes can be like that when you've got a tank that's not got the best dispersions. But some of these bouncers have been just... Wow. But here we go. We've got some flanking shots. We've only got heat left, which gives us 210 pen, and we managed to get a couple of shots there into the... 45 TP. Now we're just going for some shots there into the Churchill, which we managed to get two in even after he got unspotted. We got one left, so it's like, well, okay, I'll just bounce off the SU-85 again with heat. Oh, no, because the shot was not the most well-aimed, and it went to the far left. 
Fortunately enough, he's trying to hit us on the move and he misses. He misses again. It's like, well, okay, turretless TD problems now for you, sir. We pull off the we pull off the handbrake turn and we end up missing the first shot on tracking him only. Oh, it's been one of those games. <laughs> it's been one of those games. <laughs> Swear RNG just goes, ah, you know what? Every little bit, we'll just miss most of those shots. Why not? So, there's only two tanks left. There's the KV-3. Make that just one tank left. There's the Churchill 7. We've got four shots left in the clip, so it's like, well, I can pen this guy if I get over here and start shooting him in his lower plate. The first shot tracks him in place, which will make these other shots really easy. And we managed to slap all three shells of the last bits of the clip in and put him down to a total where he should be easily killable. And again, the reload on this T71DA is so nice. It reloads so quickly that we can just go again. And it's like, well, Mr. Churchill, I'm back for more. I didn't lose any hit points to you originally, so I can survive your first shot. And we shut down that Churchill 7. I think I said Churchill one a minute ago. We finished with victory, five kills, three and a half K damage, three and a half K assistance, the patrol duty, ace tanker, high caliber, the scout medal, two and a half K base XP. Really nice game for the T71 DA. Again, it's a really nice little tier seven light tank. If you use it to good effect, you can flank, get good shots off here and there. You can get good spotting off and it really is a damage dealer as well. Like I'd say if you, if you flank yourself into good positions and keep pumping shots into people's side, just like any other auto loader really, but it's nice the fact that you have the light tank camo and you have the, you know, the great mobility, you can pull off a lot of damage and it's cousining the premium tier seven light tank in the Lycan is also just as nice at it. And you just have a better standard pedal 175 and I think slightly better view range as well. Possibly there's just little differences here and there that obviously changed with the, changes when they brought in the tier 10 lights and yeah the lycan was always a fan favorite for me it, i just always loved playing it and then they changed it and it was still great even though it can never see tier fives in it's most of the time you always see tier eights it's still a good tank and the t71 da is just the same flavor of that just a little bit worse just a slight little bit worse generally so now we're on to the tier eight and now we move up to being a medium tank. We're in the T69, which is a tank that I think is probably a little bit underrated, to be honest. Because it's a pretty decent little tank. The one problem it had was penetration. Because the standard pen was just not good enough for the tank. And it really let it down against most of its same tier compatriots. Which is really annoying. But then they've given the T69 some buffs. So on the T69, they buffed some of the soft, well, some of the stats for the stock 76 mm gun, and they buffed the penetration of the 90 mm gun from 195 and 250 to 210 pen on its standard AP rounds and 280 on its heat rounds. All those heat rounds are dirty, which is really nice. It makes this tank so much nicer to play, so much user friendly, because 210 pen is on the lower end of a lot of tier 8s because a lot of tier 8s these days anyway starting to push the 220 mark but 210 is good enough it's not enough to struggle anymore like beforehand we came against the black prince and obviously naturally we're shooting the side of a black prince there but beforehand we came against the black prince frontally and we'd be like probably bouncing half the clip because just reasons now that extra 15 pen is lovely for it it's really nice and i really enjoyed I, the C69 is one of those that I played. I never really played because I went through the old school T49 to get to the T57 Heavy. But then I started playing it recently because I thought, oh, I'll buy it, see what it's like. And it was like, oh, actually, I quite like it. I just get frustrated with the penetration problems because the 210 pen, well, the 195 pen let you down a decent amount. You switched to 250 heat and it was just a bit of a struggle when you were bottom tier. Well, it was a real big struggle when you were bottom tier. But now 280 heat pen is great. One thing you've got to bear in mind with this tank is that you get better shell velocity on your heat because for some reason you get 1,100 and something on your heat rounds and it's like 900 and something on this standard AP. So just bear that in mind. If you have to fire at range and you're firing at something that's quite heavily armoured, you are literally best to just switch to the heat rounds. And the one thing that this tank is good with as well, and that's one thing that is nice about it, is the fact that it's got pretty decent mobility with the 51 kilometers an hour top speed. So you can flank about quite easily. And then you also reload really quickly and you put out the damage pretty decently quickly as well on the intra clip because it's a two second intra as you're seeing. So on the whole this tank is pretty decent and it's, it's a pretty underrated and kind of fun tank to play. 
So in terms of a crew on this tank, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Run and Gun, Steady Aim, Trap Mechanic, Camouflage Expertise and Muffled Shot. Now I run the Camouflage Expertise and Muffled Shot because you are a medium tank and you can basically get pretty decent camo if you run these and then also the gun perks to make that gun a little bit better. So generally for me this gun has actually been pretty decent. So I didn't really feel like I wanted to run Snapshot. I just wanted to make the camo a little bit better of this medium tank. And it helps it when I get to the sort of positions where I can... Well, where I'm flanked and I can stay unspotted while dumping this clip. Because the tank doesn't really have any armour. It gets absolutely butchered when people shoot at it. It has the kind of armour, though, on the turret. Like the T-57 Heavy and the T-54E1, though. That has those random angles that just bounce every now and then. So you can rely on that a little bit every now and then. But, yeah, generally it doesn't have armour. So don't rely on it. Just play it like that medium tank, flank, and put your auto-loading shells into good effect. So we get a nice shot there with the heat round into the VK3000 into M. Get a second shell in, and you can see that extra shell velocity that this heat round gets. It's really nice. And with this 280 heat pen now as well, we can go straight through the side of the Goranich, no problem. With the 250 beforehand, we probably still could have gone through the side of the Goranich, but it, I don't know, it always felt like it struggled even against tanks like KV-5s, pretty much. I just, this tank is definitely underrated and I, I've really enjoyed my playing of it, to be honest. So, on Thief Vault Ridge so far, we've managed to, what is it, encounter? So we've managed to push up the two line, get to 4.5k damage so far as we push back across the CD line. They've only got two tanks left, the Goranich and the Tiger 2, who is up here with this medium tank. And it's like, right, okay, you know what, I'm going to push up to help this this medium tank against this Tiger 2. And all the while, I can see if I can get some flanking shots into the Goranich. Because the Goranich is attacking this heavy tank and TD. He's just destroyed the TD. So if I can get myself into a position where I can help both this medium tank and this heavy over here fighting the Goranich, then that'll be great times. We are capping currently, though, so I know that the time frame is limited because they're never going to reset and our guys won't leave the cap. And here we go. The Tiger 2 is chasing after my friend. So this is where the heat rounds are dirty because this poor Tiger 2's armor as well is just... We go through the upper plate really easily with 280. It's really nice because especially when you're facing tier 10s as well, you're going to be able to go through them a lot easier than you used to be able to. So right here, we're going to use the pretty decent mobility of the T-69 to try and keep out traversing this Tiger 2. We fire on the move auto-aim, and then the second shot hits his gun. Third shot hits his gun. And it's like, okay, I've got to aim this shell, and now we can't kill the Tiger 2. Oh, this guy's doing it all right, but oh, just the RNG there for both shots to hit his gun. Oh, that's just bad luck. But fortunately enough, I mean, we would have reloaded there to kill him before he would have been able to kill us. But fortunately enough... Our team caps, and we're finished with the victory. Three kills, 6k damage, 198 assistance. The ace tanker, the sniper, the high caliber, 920 base XP. Really nice game for the T69. Like I say, those buffs to its penetration really have helped it. It really does decently enough against tier 9s and 10s now because with 250 heat before, it did struggle to pen. A lot of them, even in the weak spots, and you're just sitting there going, What am I supposed to do against this tank, right? Now with 280. It can go through them. And with the 210 standard pen as well, you can actually fight your own tier easily enough with 210 standard pen, which is fine. And yeah, those buffs are kind of nice. So now we're on to the tier 9 in this line. The tank that I always used to love, I recently released a video on it actually, I think it was the other the other day. And then it was like, oh yeah, they're buffing the T-41. It's like, uh, what, they're buffing the uh, T-47 heavy line. It's like, oh, okay, well, there we go. And the T-54E1 changes... So it got more penetration. Before we see what it got, it got more penetration. But on the whole, I feel like it was kind of a nerf to the tank, if I'm totally honest. When I played it, I played it quite a lot to get this replay. And yeah, I don't, I don't like how it feels compared to how it used to do. The penetration is great, don't get me wrong. It means I can deal with everything I'm going to face. And I don't see tanks and go, oh, well, I just can't do anything against that, like a Type 4 or a Type 5, like I used to be, like, well, like I used to. But, yeah, there's just little things that have changed that just make it not feel as comfortable to play anymore. And, yeah, on the whole, as well, the fact that they gave it the buffs to its penetration is great, but they nerfed pretty much everything else except for the intra clip and yeah it, it, i don't know i'm not too sure about the changes to this tank myself personally so 
in terms of the buffs that they gave to the T-54E1, they changed its health. So it went from 1750 to 1850. They changed it to a heavy tank as well, by the way. It's just at the top there. You don't quite... See it. You can't see it on this buff because there were a lot of changes to this tank. They changed the health burn per second, so it loses 146. I don't There's some sort of calculation in there for when you get set on fire. It loses a little bit more, basically, when you get set on fire. The top speed went from 43.5 kilometers an hour to 38, which is a nerf. The top reverse speed went from 20 to 14, which is, again, a nerf. The rotation speed went from... 46 to 40 degrees a second which is a nerf and you really do feel it, it it's not as nice or with its mobility generally you feel everything about that they the shot dispersion during movement and during rotation got nerfed from 0.18 to 0.2 the hull armor went from 110 to 127 and the turret armor went from 127 to 152 which is a buff but to be honest, you don't really feel it. You still get penned very, very easily. The penetration on its 90mm gun is the same as the T69, which is the stock gun, which is quite nice. They added the HE rounds to the gun. Pointless, because you're never going to take it. Because you've your lack of ammo. You Your premium round got changed from APCR to heat. Which then, with the penetration changes, went from 210 pen on the standard AP and 255 on the APCR. It's now having 248 penetration on the AP and 310 penetration on the heat rounds. Which is glorious. That penetration is fantastic. That's what it should have had. Because now I can actually deal with tier 9s and tier 10s. And I'm not having to look at this tank and go, well, I've just got to lose silver and fire gold all the time. Because that's the only way I can be anywhere near competitive with it. So that penetration change is really nice. But they also nerfed the reload from 33 seconds to 37. If they just changed it back to 36 like it used to be, that wouldn't have been too bad because, well, it was really good with 36 second reload. I didn't ever think it needed a buff into 33 like they did. On a reforge not, what, about a year ago, they changed it to 33 second reload when it used to be 36. Like I say, the reload on it used to be all right anyway. So if they changed it back to 36 in lieu of being a heavy tank and being a bit more brawly, Fair enough. But they gave it an extra second on top of that, which, yeah. when you, Especially when you're releasing the Cobra T-54 as well that re recently came out, and that thing reloads so much quicker. I'm not too sure why they did that, to be honest. It got buffed on its intra-clip from 2.22 to 2 seconds, which is fine. It puts the clip out away quicker again, just like the heavy tank. It's that step closer to the T-57 heavy, the top tier tank. 0.4 accuracy buffed to 0.38, but the dispersion during turret rotation went from 0.1 to 0.14, and the aftershot dispersion went from, point, from 4 to 3.5. So they've nerfed a lot of the dispersions, although they buffed the aftershot one, and they buffed the accuracy by 0.2. Well, the dispersion changes have hurt it quite a lot. There's a lot of times when you come from moving, you stop, you get aimed, and you still miss, or you... You know, you snap onto a target and you try and get a shot in and it misses anyway. It's kind of annoying in that way. And the mobility changes are a big factor. They really, you really do feel the mobility changes quite a lot. Especially the track traverse and the top speed. So in terms of equipment on this tank, I run vert stabs, optics and traction system. Traction system to get me that better top speed to up to 41 kilometers an hour. But naturally more so for the track traverse i want that track traverse back and that's what you get up to i think it's about 44 degrees a second i think it is with the track traverse and obviously you get a little bit more if you put a crew in and stuff like that so you do get a little bit nicer which is fine and yeah like i said optics to spot for myself and vert stabs to make this gun 20 percent more accurate because it really needs it so in terms of crew on this tank as well, it's the same as what I run on the T-57 Heavy. I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Trap Mechanic, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun, and Off-Road Driving. Off-Road Driving to make sure I'm going to get to my top speed as best as I can by reducing the ground resistances. And the gun perks to make sure that I get this gun as good as humanly possible. And like I say, I say it's exactly the same for the T-57 Heavy. So in this game on Prokhorovka, it's actually very similar to a game that I had in the other replay, well, the other video I did in the T54E1 the other day. 
And that is, we managed to do 7.2k damage so far with a thousand assistance from that little position at E3. If you can keep poking, because it's still an autoloader, and it's still, with how fast it puts out the damage, if you just keep catching people out and putting shots in, you're going to do some damage very, very effectively. And that's what we've managed to do. We've managed to keep catching people out and just keep pummeling the shots in. We have only four shots of heat rounds left. And that's because we did blind fire our last clip or our second to last clip at that hill in front of us because the STRV 103B, which I thought was up there, was up there. And I actually ended up watching the replay to see where he'd gone. And my clip was like m millimeters off of hitting him. <laughs> Two of my shots were so close to hitting him that it spooked him and he went to the position you're going to see him pop up in, in a minute. And we know he's somewhere because I think he got spotted a second ago. And there we go. He ends up getting spotted because he fires and misses at us. And we're just looking for the shot, but I've, I'm low health. So I don't want to take the hit. He ends up pulling back. We managed to bounce a shot there. A heat round for the M103, which is great. Probably wouldn't have bounced that before. That extra little bit of armor does count for something, but it's still... Like I say, not something you should rely on. We missed one of the shots on the Cobra, sadly. And we've fully aimed the shot to make sure this final heat shell for three... 10 is going in to that M103 and we are out of ammo. There's only two tanks left though. They are low health. They are caught out. This Cobra once his fighter clip is done for. And it's like, well, yeah, I'm I'm done. That's that's all I can do. It's all that's the last bit of effectiveness I could do. I wish I'd managed to get that final shell in, or should I say one of the other shells in to get it up to 8.8k damage, but we still had a great game for this tank. We've done 8.5k damage with 2.8k assistance, which is a fantastic game for a tier 9 tank. And the T-51E1 is still a tank that I used to like, and I still like it. I just think that the changes is it overall is a nerf for it. We finished with five kills, eight and a half k damage, two point eight k assistance. The Ace tank of the high caliber, two point three k base XP. A really great game for the T-51E1. I say if you play it to its advantages as an auto loader and play that surprise peek -a boom and keep popping up shooting people and then pulling back, you're gonna have a great time, just like every other auto loader generally. But yeah, like I said, the, the buffs and the nerfs to this tank generally, on the whole, feels like a... Sure, you've given it more penetration, but at the same time, was it worth it? I don't know. I, I'd leave that one all up to you guys. Penetration, like I say, is great now. It's, it's You don't worry about anything, but the mobility changes are a bit... Uh, the hull armor changes that you get and the turret armor changes are like, well, cool, I can bounce more, but at the same time, I can't because it's still not that effective to be perfectly honest and the dispersion changes well for everything except for on after firing also you do feel it with the way the gun blooms just that little bit more as well so we're on to the pinnacle of the line we're at the tier 10 we're at the t57 heavy a tank that puts out damage no like no other it really zooms out the damage if you catch someone out, you can pop 1,600 damage into them in the blink of an eye, and they just have no real idea what's happened. And so far, we're up to 1,200 damage because we managed to pen three of the four shots that we have in the clip. Unfortunately, we bounced one on the IS-3, or should I say we took a really reckless shot at the IS-3, and it ended up hitting his space armor, but we managed to put two extra into the Pantera. You do have to be careful with the T-57 Heavy, because it's the same as the T-54 E1 was in that last game. If you have a game that lasts even five minutes and you are constantly firing, you will run out of ammo very, very quickly. But that 20 second reload and the burst damage that this tank puts out is so dirty, it's so good. So as you can see, our next target is this Trinity. And it's like, oh, hello, Mr. Trinity. Oh, the shot derped. But, well, okay, you put one shot into us. We'll just drop the rest of this clip into you. And that goes the tier eight mercenary medium tank. The Trinity Mark II, gone. There's like 12, another 1,200 damage. Spot on 1,200 damage as well. 2.4k damage. <laughs> it's funny how these things work out. It's really satisfying. And we've only lost like... We've, we've basically put 1,200 damage into people for one shot each. Now we've got this 60 TP. It's like, well, hello, sir. I'm going to try and put my clip into you. We end up tracking and penning... Well, tracking him. We didn't pen him, but we put another 1,200 nearly into that guy. Nearly up to 3.6k, and we didn't take a shot that time, which is perfect. That surprise, surprise, auto-loading feeling is a great time. And like I say, just how fast this tank puts out the damage. If Especially if they fired, they have no time to react to it, and a lot of the time, they won't be able to get a shot back at you in anger. So that 60 TP's pulled back round the corner, and I'm like, okay, you know what? 
I'm going to move up. I'm thinking possibly I could go through this gap and try and get some shots into the back end of these guys. Or I could move up on the left to start shooting these heavies on the F line. But you know what? No, no, no. I am definitely going around this way. We spot a Jagdpanzer. It's like, okay, no, I'm just going to ignore that. The first shot derps again. So far, there's, that's been the consistent theme of this replay so far. We always end up not penning one shot, but we get another 1,200 into that round with Tower Panzerwagen. Yep. That's just the way it is. T57 Heavy's gun isn't the best. It does derp a lot, which is why you run the vert stabs, which is why you run the gun perks on your crew. In terms of in terms of equipment, by the way, on this tank, it does change up a little bit on this one. I do run the powertrain, and I run optics and vert stabs. Vert stabs, obviously, to make gun 20% more accurate, which is what you want to do. And then the powertrain, just to give me that extra engine power and a little bit extra top speed to help me just reach that top speed and it really does kind of help you do feel it it's just it's that little bit more responsive with its engine and right there we got a nice full clip into that e100 which is juicy perfect he just wasn't paying attention and we managed to spam the whole lot in now he's not put well now he's pulling back we end up missing the first shot because we try and snap it into the side of his turret but we're going to move up i want to put my final two shells into this guy to shut him down unfortunately with ricochet one he pens us and then the final shell doesn't go in we end up doing track damage own well we track him and it's like well this is awkward sure i'm going to reload really quickly here i'm going to reload in the same amount of time near enough that he will but he's going to pen me probably for 700 in fact he goes for the guy behind me and then i'll be able to finish him off which we do and naturally, we didn't want to end up on a lower hit points because we wanted to be able to, you know, still have some to save to, to take a hit here and there to drop clips. But fortunately enough, this M103 gives us some shots into his back end, which we say thank you very much, and we finish him off. We're up to 7.6k damage with 167 assistance. We've got one AP round left, and I was just looking to see if I had any shots at anyone so that I could put, you know, put this round to use. And then, fortunately enough, that shell goes in. Then it sets the Jagdpanzer on fire and finishes him off. That was a tight angle to hit that guy from, so we'll take it. And there goes the Jagdpanzer, and we're up to 8.1k damage with 167 assistance. This tank excels in those sorts of areas where you can just keep pumping clips out, keep catching people out, keep dropping shots. So city maps like t Freed Line, where you can get involved in the cities and stuff, is always going to go well. So now we've only got eight rounds left of heat. We get one shot into the artillery. We get one shot into the 268 version 5's upper plate. And then the final shells miss the 268 there. We're up to 8.8k damage. And I was looking at it going, wait, this could be like 10k if I play it right. And unfortunately, those two shots would have put us up to, what, 9.6k. And then I might have been able to squeeze it with a final shell. But unfortunately, the derpy gun handling let us down and we couldn't quite reload in time to get another shot into that 268 version 5. But we did finish the game with the great total. We finished with the victory, 8.8k damage, 412 assistance, ace tanker, confederate, high caliber, sniper medal, the 1778 base XP. A really nice game for the T-15 Heavy, which is a really solid tier 10 heavy tank and it's a solid auto loader. The damage output that this thing puts out is insane. The reload's insane. It's such a great tank. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.